The town of Durham was asked to create a suitable memorial expressing the great loss and the passing of Dr. George G. McGregor, that the same shall include the affection and respect of our townspeople. I tell a lot of people that most of what I got from UNH came from the Ambulance Corps, and I also took a few classes and got a degree while I was here as well, but it really became um, our lifeblood. But you also want to give something back to the community, and I feel that um, I can give something back to the community as well as fulfilling something inside me. And I think as anyone, or as most people find when they join the Corps, uh, you kind of you get thrown in head first. And uh, you find that you start out with something that you think may be a little bit of a hobby that ends up being more of a lifetime commitment to the core. Even if you don't make a large impact in saving someone's life, you still can help them through a very rough time in their life and that's important to a lot of people. I think they're performing a tremendous service to the community and you always have to ask, where would we be without them? I know where I'd be. I wouldn't be here today. And I think it's important that we all recognize that and support them to the extent we can. The Durham Ambulance Corps was formally organized in February 1968 with a group of officers, a board of directors, a set of bylaws, a 1959 Cadillac ambulance, a home and dispatch center in a cooperative arrangement with the Durham UNH Fire Department, and a response area that included Durham, UNH, Lee, Madbury, and neighboring rural areas. During the first year of its existence, the Corps boasted 30 qualified attendants who responded to 215 ambulance calls. And today, in 1993, the Durham Ambulance Corps celebrates 25 years of volunteer emergency care service. But this celebration would not have been possible if not for the visions of the Corps' founders and the extraordinary dedication and sacrifices of hundreds of Corps members, past and present. The Corps was founded as a memorial to Dr. George G. McGregor, a general practitioner who served the Durham area for 34 years and died the night before the Durham Town Meeting of 1967. For 25 years, the Durham Ambulance Corps has maintained Dr. McGregor's legacy of generosity and community service by selflessly helping people in need of emergency medical care at all hours. The Corps has a history of growth and change and has established itself as a statewide leader setting high standards for emergency medical care. Community service, professionalism, tradition. These are the foundations set forth by Dr. McGregor yesterday and honored by the Durham Ambulance Corps today. This video journey with Corps members past and present celebrates these foundations as the Durham Ambulance Corps embarks upon its next quarter century of volunteer service and reminds us that the ideals of community service, professionalism, and tradition are only as vital as the people who uphold them. Probably the most rewarding thing that I've done since I've been in Durham, and that's 45 years, is to be a, play a part in the founding of the Durham Ambulance Corps. And it all began with George McGregor, who was the Durham's doctor from the middle 1930s until his death in 1967. He was a family doctor who would come to you any time of the day or night. I recall when our young two-year-old son Jim was very sick one night and we called Doc McGregor and he was there in no time came in his pajamas with a bathrobe on and he would go off and say what are you calling me out in the middle of the night for but when he walked upstairs to see Jim calm down and said how are you and what's your problem and that sort of thing he was so so gentle so when he died in the night before town meeting in 1967, the town immediately passed a resolution saying, we've got to create a suitable memorial to good old Doc McGregor. And because of my following him around and photographing him and all, the uh, selectman asked me to be chairman of the committee, which I was glad to do. And we talked about 
a variety of things we might do. We might provide some uh, nursing equipment in the high school for the school nurse, a cart or whatever might be needed. We might put a nice big plaque out in front of Young's restaurant in the triangle across the street saying we missed old Doc McGregor, but I had had this experience with him and knew that he, we needed better ambulance service, so I began to promote that. Well, when I joined the Ambulance Corps, it was about a year and a half after the Corps had, had first come online. And I recall that uh, there were uh, a number of the members were the original charter members, people like Frank Heald, and Jim Holter, and Bill Annis, Haven Hayes, John Rines, Mike Cowan. Um, we still were running the, the old 1959 Grey Ghost Cadillac Ambulance, which was the, the first ambulance that the Corps ever acquired, donated by Brisson and Kent Funeral Home. By a quirk of fate, I ended up playing the clarinet in between a tuba player named Don Bliss and a clarinet player named Merrill Flewelling, who, unbeknownst to me, were at that time part of the foundation of the Durham Ambulance Corps in the very early stages. You know, we came together as students, many of us, with without any direction in life, if you will. The 70s were, were hectic. Uh, they were at the height of Vietnam War protests. Uh, they were at the height of one questioning authority. Uh, they were at the height of rejecting anything that the establishment meant. It was, it was sort of interesting to me that there was a whole other exact opposite uh, culture going on, such as the Durham Ambulance Corps and the, and the Durham Fire Department, where there was a group of very dedicated individuals who had developed a camaraderie around a common theme, which was to, to provide uh, a very important service to the community. And we saw through, through the universities and the town's eyes and the other towns we served, really the, the society played out, uh, if you will, right in front of us. And so that really led to friendships that have existed to this day. At the time, we thought we were pretty progressive. The, I guess the EOA, the, the esophageal airway, was, was just coming into vogue. We got one of those. We practiced with that. We thought it was the, the most wonderful thing. And probably now that's, that's uh, old technology. The Corps was a lot of very hardworking, dedicated people that had, by, the, by standards of those days, uh, some advanced first aid training um, and who were very committed to uh, getting up, going out, getting the best care possible to people um, for, for no rewards other than the fact that they've helped their fellow citizens and their, their fellow students and, and anybody else who happened to be in need. One was with John Rines. We got a call for a, a childbirth coming in Lee and needed the ambulance. So three of us went on the run. John was driving because uh, he was here at the station when the call came in. I had to come in from home or something. But the thing that interested me is he decided he needed to shave. So while he was driving out the ambulance, he took his electric razor out and started to shave himself. But anyway, we got out there and delivered the baby. He really did the delivery because he knew he had knew much more than I did or the other attendant. So he delivered the baby. But I can say to my friends nowadays, I delivered a baby one time when I was on the ambulance corps. In thinking back, it's, it's interesting. Here I was a college kid, 19 years old, responsible for an ambulance, three crew members, however many patients there happen to be. It's really an awesome responsibility, and, and I think, looking back on it, I should have taken that a lot more seriously than I ever did. Uh, it was fun, it was interesting, it was exciting. We were, we were in the middle of all the, all the activities, and as I said, we were very good at it. But geez, the responsibility is awesome, and it kind of scares me now to think back on, on what we did. The, what, during the 80s, the biggest feeling that I had at times was that, is the Corps going to make it? Is the Corps going to uh, continue? Because there were many times, many, many times, when it was difficult to get crews. Uh, many times when we... I was at that time in the early 80s a, a dispatcher uh, on the midnight shift and I can remember uh, still to this day what, ha receiving a call for an ambulance and having to tone out for a full crew and wondering if I was ever going to get a crew or whether I would have to go to Dover or some other town for mutual aid and there were people 
I think what marks the time period of that core was that there are one or two individuals each year that clearly carry the core on their backs. Um, it, during that one time period where I was a dispatcher, Doug McBride, month after month, night after night, would be the one primary who could come in when no one else could come in and, and handle the call. And you had people like Bruce Baxter, Randy Hall, Rose DiGiovanni, Pat O'Hearn, of course. When I joined the Corps, we uh, did not have a station, and we were sort of camped out in the Durham Fire Department and the Lee Fire Department. And while they, they were very generous to allow us to use their space, uh, it really didn't allow us to do the things that we needed to do as we grew such as, you know, have a place we could do our own training, have an office we could do our, our paperwork and things like that. It was wonderful to get the station in 1985. The, the members put a lot of hours, countless hours, into putting up sheetrock, painting, decorating, building the bunks, scrounging furniture from relatives and friends. In my role as the president, I had an opportunity to see the core change over the past couple of years. I've been president on and off for the past couple of years, alternating with other people. And I think the core today is probably the strongest it's been, at least since I've been on the core. Our people are more highly trained than they've ever been. We have more advanced life support trained people. Because uh, Durham Ambulance Corps was right on campus, uh, it was very convenient for the students to uh, participate um, so it was a symbiotic relationship that was just natural. We had students who had the training, we had faculty and staff who had taken the training, and they were able to utilize these skills at Durham Ambulance Corps. So the convenience of it, and the fact is that um, many of these students needed an outlet to provide a service. Uh, many students want to do something. A really unique attitude towards training. It makes it my job very easy because people want to train, they want to, they want to learn more, and they want to, to learn more not only for themselves, but they want to learn more because they obviously want to do better patient care, and I think that's something that's really very unique to this Ambulance Corps. And a few years ago, I never knew that the Durham Ambulance Corps even existed. And the reason I found out is they saved my life. Um, a few years ago, I was in my backyard Sunday afternoon, having fun raking the lawn. Um, and then I noticed I got a couple of bites. I didn't pay any attention to them. And then I uh, got a little bit dizzy, went in the house. And fortunately, there's somebody home. And I told my kids that I was getting a little bit dizzy, and I thought I got stung by a bee, but I wasn't sure. I was about five months pregnant with Kathy, and there was a call for a subject who had been stung by a bee. Um, and had um, gone unconscious and I knew that I needed to go. I really wasn't taking all that many calls at that point, um, being the nervous new mom that I was, um, but I knew that I had to go and I went um, and that call was um, a significant one in my life. Um, my wife immediately called the ambulance. Now a couple things happen that are very important here. First, the quick response from the Durham Ambulance Corps. And second, not only was it quick, but they knew exactly what to do. And because they knew what to do, I, they saved my life. And that was um, the, the uh, comment I got from the uh, attending physician that I spoke to at long afterwards at the hospital. So I'm, I'm indebted to the Durham Ambulance Corps. Um, how do you ever thank anyone for saving your life? You know, That's very difficult. I think people today who are in the Ambulance Corps will, will leave here maybe thinking it's just a, a span of their college life for the most part. Uh, but I, I virtually will say to you that I think they'll look back on it and realize there's perhaps uh, the best part of their life as far as learning, uh, learning about oneself, learning about personalities, learning about decision making, learning about real stress in one's life, uh, all else really pales in comparison.
although it's been a very a long eight or nine years and and I look back at the hours you know that that, that I think a lot of people myself included have put into the core it's been a very rewarding experience I think some of the things that I've gained from the core um, a real sense of responsibility um, and sometimes I look back and say maybe too much during the times when I maybe should have been doing some other things uh, socially or more more in the, in the social aspect instead of spending as much time um, at DAC. Yet DAC was also a social environment. Well, uh, I'm going, I'm entering medical school. In fact, I just got in to Dartmouth Medical School. Uh, I'll probably be going there in September. Um, so I've got the, you know, I've got the one of the biggest hurdles I think that medical stu students uh, go through and that's uh, first you know touching the patient first making that that contact um, and I've, I've got that taken care of because I've been doing that for three years and that feels great I feel very comfortable around people I'm not you know very apprehensive about that aspect of things um, so DAC has just done you know wonders for for that and I think with I think any field um, you, you're, deal you're dealing with people and communication and how you express yourself and relate to people is so essential in every field um, and you know being a member of Durham Ambulance of course teaches you all those things hands-on you get thrown right into it <laughs> it's scary sometimes but um, definitely it's a good experience I think that the hospitals in the area would probably say that we provide a very high level of care and I'd have to agree and the nice thing about what we're doing today I think is the fact that our volunteers aren't rushed and we're able to provide a level of compassionate care and yet um, quality care. I see EMS in the future becoming even more structured, more things being required, um, more of the things that we consider today as being advanced level skills being incorporated into the basic curriculum so that even the minimum level a provider will have what today is an advanced skill. Looking back over the 25 years and from what I see of the core today, that tradition of change uh, certainly remains alive. The fact that you have paramedics now on the ambulance corps, uh, the fact that you're uh, continuing to seek out new ways of, of improving the level of service to the public. One of the traditions that I'm very glad that has not disappeared is the uh, the memorialization of Doc McGregor. Uh, I, one of the things I regret the most about my membership in the Corps is that I never knew Doc McGregor. Uh, most people know that he, he, he's, the Corps was created in his memory, uh, but I can recall that there were many uh, meetings that we had, in particular meetings with uh, a lot of the longtime residents in Durham, uh, their fear that somewhere down the road uh, the name McGregor would be dropped off the name of the Ambulance Corps or would be forgotten that that was the whole purpose of, of his being here. So it's exciting for me to walk into this building and see his portrait there. And that's one of the traditions that, probably the, the primary tradition that I hope never leaves the Corps. And this was about two years ago. Don Bliss and I were at a UNH hockey game. And we had, were coming back, and it was this beautiful winter evening, and, and the snow was falling, and just in these great big gigantic flakes that, that as a child, you, you remember each one being different. And we had parked up by the old fire station. And as we were walking along and came in front of the fire station with, without any verbal communication, we both stopped. And I will never forget the two of us looking in at that, at the windows, at the doors, and just staring there, Don and I. And he leaned over to me and says, you thinking what I'm thinking? And I said, I bet you I am. And that was, and it was the most profound moment I think that's happened to me with this whole thing was that, he says, can you believe that we came here as college students and had the responsibilities of, of saving lives, of making snap instantaneous decisions that could make a break uh, someone's life. He said it's absolutely overwhelming. We stood there for a good another five or ten minutes and just it was it was virtually like watching a movie of seeing old friends and people in, in the windows of the of the fire station telling stories, uh, the door casings that we had hit and run over and stuff and so that that whole 20 minute was the most profound uh, thing that ever happened to me.